Hey, good morning. It's Brett, Useful Aircraft. 7 a.m., 87 degrees. Dude, it's just been a while since I can get to the garage. Uh, you know, work's been busy. Been across the water a couple of times. Um, flying is what it is. So, anyway, happy to be back. Let's do some building today. You guys remember I made this thing, the uh, Angry Little Bird. Sub 250, but it uh, doesn't fly like a beginner airplane. This thing scoots. Um, flies well, but... Uh, you know, looking at it, I'm going to say this, and you're all going to say, oh, yeah, I knew it. Um, maybe we need a little bit more rudder. And I don't know. It's not necessarily a rudder. It's more of a vertical stabilizer. Um, there's no control surface on it. Uh, I also want to increase the size of the elevator somewhat um, since we're doing it and uh, give it a little bit more stability when it comes to turns. This airplane is subject to a lot of uh gyroscopic effects when it comes into turns uh you would you would bank the airplane and yet at the same time you wouldn't find the tail following it around as it nicely should instead uh the gyroscopic precession was preventing the airplane from making it was i believe turns to the left in this particular case so uh, i do find it fun you know uh, a lot of folks they say oh you know you take your motor mount and you put it three degrees nose down and, and a couple of degrees to the right and that's going to counteract the effects of torque. Well, I don't. I just mount them square. Um, I use um, quadcopter parts. So, you know, my props, they spin every direction under the sun. It just it just doesn't matter. And oftentimes until I sit there and test it, I don't know, and i got to find the prop that works. So inevitably, I torque the motor over to the right or the left to counteract torque and P-factor, only to discover that uh, that was the wrong direction. So... We're going to cut into it without further ado. We'll start breaking this airplane apart and uh, harvest the parts. And then I've got the parts ready for uh, the next build and we'll go from there. I can even show you a way to give away the ending. The rudder is going to go from this to that. So we're going to gain some, some size there. And the elevator, I haven't compared it yet. Elevator is going to go... Well, I'm full of shit. Same size elevator. Anyway, let's start building. Mentioned it before, this is uh, isopropyl. Uh, I keep it in one of these squeeze bottles. If you keep this in the garage, it's going to expand with temperature changes. So what I've done, you can see, there's a hole in the bottle right there. When I put my, hole, my finger over the hole, I can squeeze it and I can get the isopropyl to flow. If you don't, that vent prevents the, uh, the isopropyl from pumping itself out as it gets warm. So squeeze isopropyl on this, makes the hot glue release nice and easy. There we go. Let's, uh, pull some servos. Hard spin. Tilt you down so you can watch. Here we go. These control horns, those things are tiny. They're the control rods. Go on to the other side, same thing. I have thought about it. I could build this airplane with. Uh, two servos. I do it with some of my other ones where uh, only one servo for the uh, ailerons and one for the elevator, but you know, I kind of enjoy, especially on an airplane that has performance like this, having the option to throw a flapperon in there. And uh, the flapperons are effective. A lot of folks will try and make it go full deflection. You end up stalling out your control surfaces. Um, so it doesn't really help you out if you put, put too much control in. Same thing, a little hot glue in there, in there.
Just making sure while I have the isopropyl on it, I pull off all my hot glue residue. There we go. Pull the uh, elevator. There we go. Got that removed. We're also going to swap to the new style control horns. You see, those are the old. They have short base plates. The new ones have a longer base plate. So, uh, those are the parts. The uh, top of it are the same. Uh -huh. Get this servo out. Same thing, remove your hot glue while you have the uh, isopropyl working. There we go. Toss it down there. Let's pick up our parts. We scavenged all we need. That's it. Let's go in the trash. Alrighty, so the motor mount, I have a change to the motor mount that I want to uh, put into play. This is the uh, old motor mount. It just basically hung out on the nose. The new motor mount, um, this kept coming loose. What ended up happening is, is it just pulled off the uh, off the nose of the airplane, the foam would separate. Actually, it wasn't even the hot glue that was letting go, it was the foam. Um, so I made this, and if you notice, it has the holes in the side. So this will extend down the sides of the fuselage, and then those holes all inject hot glue into there on the sides, and it'll provide additional grip. So let's go ahead and swap that out. Our glass is fun. Oh. I used a little bit of hot glue in there as Loctite. It works. Or I'm lazy. Dental pick will uh, help you to remove these. Comes right out. I've been bored on YouTube. I don't know that I've been so bored on YouTube. I've watched guys use dental picks to pull hot glue out of screws, but you know, I don't know. I spend a lot of time in hotels. You'd be amazed at what you end up watching when you got, you know, 11 days sitting in a Marriott. Alrighty. Those are out. Is this the right size? No, not so lucky. I designed my motor mount so I can use the uh, shipped hardware. Uh, it's just easier that way. You know, you got a 3D printer, man. Just uh, countersink your holes. Um, you know, it's amazing how well the PLA will hold. A lot of guys, oh, you can't use it for motor mounts. You know, you can't use anything in the sun. You can't use anything that gets wet. That's all bullshit. Um, you know, it may not last forever, but I made a... Uh, Anchor light holder for a boat printed out of white PLA. Same stuff, overture. Um, and that thing has been on that boat for years, sitting out in salt water out in LA. Um, zero issue, exposed to the sun. I'm not saying it doesn't degrade, they become chalky after a little while, but honestly, it becomes chalky um, even just through exposure to rubbing alcohol. So, got that down to the bare metal. Let's start putting our screws in. You can see it's countersunk inside there. The uh, holes for where the uh, uh, 
uh, screws go in for the motors on these are offset because oftentimes the mounting holes on the motors, you know, one set will be, I don't know, 16 millimeters on center and the other will be 19 millimeters on center. Well, I can't be, uh, can't be bothered to figure out which one's which and try and remember how it prints what orientation on the plate. So what do I do? I just uh, make my holes oval. So that way it'll work with, with any of them. Uh, works well. All righty. One more screw to go. All right, these, now once you get them in, just like you do with a uh, lug nuts on a car, I do an offset uh, tightening pattern where, you know, you go across in a star formation and do one set of torquing and then do it again. I just take it till there's a little bit of resistance, call it good. So tip of the glue gun, just right on top of those nuts, and I'll fill that little hole just with a dab. It's uh, there we go. It's honestly, it's very effective. I don't know if you can even see in there. It's very effective, and it's um. It's easier to clean out than Loctite, so I guess I'm like a Greek father in that, you know, they'll use Windex for anything, I'll use hot glue for anything, so. Let's uh, start in the building and throw out the old motor mount. These are our pieces for the day. There we go, that'll be the uh, new vertical stab. Elevator, same thing, the marks here and here for uh, the um, popsicle sticks. Why don't we just start throwing those in? That'll be the forward cowl closeout, servo mount for the elevator. I break up the tail cover so I can pass the elevator uh, control rod through there fuselage and our wing so here we go I'll put you down here and let you watch from up close because this has got to be some exciting television grab a couple of popsicle sticks hot glue gun same thing yeah there's a fold on this sheet um, you know, the paper didn't adhere perfectly right. You can see that line there. Wow, that's actually wild. They line up. Um, cool. Don't really care, you know. So, I love these airplanes. I don't build, you know, they're not designed to be the perfect looking airplane. They're designed to be a hell of a lot of fun to go out and fly. And they do a pretty good job of that. Put these in. Give it a wait, let them sit. Uh, this fold line, I'm gonna go ahead and use my uh, my little foam roller. This is a tool that I made, piece of PVC, as you can see, 3D printed these end caps. This side holds a single fender washer, and this side holds uh, one, two, three, four fender washers, and this should be right around five millimeters or thereabouts, I believe, so 5.8, all right. Um, this really makes for consistent folds. You know, sometimes the laser is subject to the effects of temperature and everything else, um, and it doesn't necessarily cut as, as well as one would hope. Um, so I made this little tool to go in and crush the fold lines. And again, I'm not trying to, you know, destroy it, but just in doing so, it just makes that folding moment so much easier. So I've just run down those, do the same on the elevator. And you can use it for interior folds, exterior folds, you know, whatever, 
floats your boat. So what I've been doing is I've been putting cut lines and breaking these down into smaller segments. You'll see that on a later build if you hang out and watch like, uh, I gotta rebuild the bush plane, probably do that this afternoon. I've really been enjoying that thing. So let's go ahead and a little bit of hot glue. That's our CG mark. My CG marks are not the definitive be all end all. This is absolutely where it must, must, must be. Um, they're basically, I take a swag and, and I have flown them with it, but it's just a determination that this is a safe CG point um, that it'll fly. So you can take it back if you want a little bit more instability and acro performance, or you can bring it forward if you want a little bit more benign flight characteristics. Let's do the other side. Same thing. And this airplane with a 3S850, it does. It ends up being, um, I think this is one of the sub 250. I'm, yeah, about 98% certain it is. Um, it ends up being sub 250. It should, unless you build really carelessly heavy. Uh, but at the same time, you know, that's a nice goal that you can have. Uh, I'm not too terribly hung up on it. I don't spare the hot glue, that is for sure. And then uh, it seems to work well. Why don't we get some control horns like we talked about? So control horns here, I'll break them apart. Yeah, they're 3D printed, but you see how I put that sprue? It's because I like them to be connected, so I have a matching set. The reason being, I would not mount this control horn in that configuration. I would mount it like this. I want to have the larger surface to have more overlap with the underlying extension. So in my builds, the hinge line will be down. So this will come up from the bottom. So pop that through and we'll hit it with a bit of hot glue. I show this every time. You see that hole in the center? I force hot glue through it. It acts like a rivet. So you see how that ends up looking? Hot glue through the center of the uh, control horn. So later when I you know, run around for finishing, I'll put a dab on the underside, but right now, not terribly worried about it. We can start pulling off our one, two, three blocks. Reason I don't put it on there, you know, for those of you screaming into the comment section, um, you know, you lay it down, it's going to stick to your table. All right, so those are through, same thing. Control horns on this are going to come up through the bottom, and they're going to be uh, facing underneath the aircraft. Oh, that's the wrong side. Got another one. So, this is the one I need. There we are. I should tighten where I put these in by a millimeter or two so that they sit there and they press in. If I made these smaller or narrower, they would hold. Um, the reason I know that is because I, well, it's obvious, and also I accidentally did it on a build and I said, wow, I really like that. I know, most exciting television on television. Here we go. All right, those are through. The wing is done at this point. I can move it, slide it off to the side. Let's get our fuselage. Fuselage, those are the fold lines. Bring it to the edge of the table. It just folds like that breaks along these folds. All right, that guy's pretty well secure. This is our uh, elevator servo capture plate. Um, it is wide and then tapers back here, so that's gonna install just like that. We'll put some hot glue on the uh, perimeter, not where the tabs are. We're going to have our one, two, three blocks at the ready. 
and we're going to jig it up. There we go. Put it in place, put it in place. The other way to know which way goes forward, um, that cutout that you see at the leading edge of the servo is for the wire that passes out of the servo. I have that facing forward. In most of my builds, I'll have it pointing towards where the radios are installed. I'm going to use some one, two, three blocks at the back to taper the fuselage as it will. That way, this bend is also reinforced. What I'll do is I'll go in with my hot glue, put a little on the back here. Let's get you looking that way. So, you can see, flip you around, turn you down. Little hot glue in there. Hold these in position. And that'll sit nicely, make sure everybody is, yeah, what I'm checking Let's see if I can get the camera to point to it. Just making sure on the back end here that all these tabs are nestled in square. You can see how they cut out? Yeah. So, anyway, that looks about right. All right, let's uh, flip you around again. There we go. Um, while we're just sitting and waiting, we can throw a uh, servo in there. Grab this little guy. Same thing, like I said, the wire comes out forward. That's going to go through that tiny cutout on the rectangle that is the servo hole. So I'll see if you can see inside. Yep. See how the wire is going forward? This way it doesn't bend it too ter terribly when I put it in. Now it's foam board. I don't think it's going to make a lick of difference. So we've got that in place. A little bit of hot glue in the center there. And I strap it. Hot glue in the center, so it comes out the back end, and I strap it. You don't have to do it this way. You can put hot glue in any way you want. But either way, I think you can uh, you can see how I've secured that. All right, that guy's good. Waiting for the uh, hot glue um, in the tail. Let me see. Nope, not yet. I'm going to use my little blowing friend. I got this guy here. Lighter shot, we're panning out, I know. There So, I'll turn him on. I'm an idiot, the arrow show me which way it blows. Put that to blow up its tail. Alrighty, um, that's holding those in. Why don't we move these blocks forward, like that. Put in these uh, aileron servos. I suppose they're flapper on servos, I don't know. Used for whatever you want. So, a little bit of hot glue underneath and the servo cutout. I like this airplane because you can install the avionics. There's a lot of these that you can do it. You can install the avionics before you close out the fuselage. And boy, that is handy. Same thing. Uh, you will see there's a cutout um, indicating the direction of the wire exit from the servo. Um, it is right there, so I'll bring you in and let you see closer. And uh, have I installed the servos the wrong way? Yes, absolutely. So there's our mess of wires coming in. Um, let's see how we're doing at the tail end of this thing. Okay, the uh, we are fully cured back here. I can touch it. It's tacked up. That's fine. I'm going to leave it in the jig. Watch this. This is what I think is fun. Pull this wiring back. Let's go towards the front end. You can see here. I'm going to go in, lay some hot glue about, oh, I don't know, an inch and a half. Maybe two. I don't know. Or so back. Now we got to bring those front sides the fuselage in and close that out. 
What can we do? Oh, we can pinch them in like this. And then you see how the airplane just rotates in the jig? That works out really well. So I will use these to squeeze it. And then I'll use this one to move my center of gravity forward. Let's see. And then I'll put my little fan in there. So there you are. Again, that's some exciting television. Okay, we're watching hot glue dry. Boy, you are scraping the bottom of the barrel. All righty. Uh, so we're waiting for that to set. I'm going to split these. We have our uh, receiver. These things, that glue on the bottom is not the best I've ever experienced. Uh, it's probably going to go, so look at the channels, and this will be accessible. I don't glue it into position until we're done. Remember, your ground wire goes at the back. Channel one I use, and this is entirely up to you, throttle. And then I have my ailerons, and I do this same way we do in an airplane. Left side is number one. Captain is number one. Um, so that'll go in the next available channel, which in this case is going to be channel two. And same thing, ground wire goes at the back, signal wire at the front. Next will be our other aileron. We'll go in the next available channel with the signal wire at the front, ground wire at the back. And then our elevator comes in, and that will be the final channel. So... Same thing, pay attention to signal wire and ground wire. And then lastly, we have power coming in. So I use these tiny little ESCs. Okay, that's a, uh, a 20 amp, I don't know, the Opto, you know, ESC. Um, works great. Did my heat shrink pull back? I don't know, whatever, maybe it did. Um, but it has no BEC. You notice there's just a, uh, a signal and a ground wire coming off the, off the uh, back of the ESC. So we need a source of DC power to run everything, and that's exactly what this guy is. That's our battery eliminator circuit. You buy them cheap. I get them off AliExpress, I think so. Take an old servo wire, solder it into the back end. Then I'll plug this into the back of that avionics bus. Uh, and that'll provide power for the servos. You notice I just cut the signal wire off of that, um, just so you don't think it's the wrong thing. I like to tuck my antenna towards the back. And this will end up just getting uh, glued in. So I can pull that antenna back here. And there it lives. That'll just get tucked in back there. Let me feel. That's uh, the leading edge of the nose. We're just about good to go. So I'll start dismantling my my blocks, take my blocks and go home. Pull these guys off, there we are. And let's see how we set it up. Oh, we only glued it a little bit to the uh, one, two, three block. That looks to be in good shape. So, what we should do, let's uh, build the tail. Um, we have the avionics in, so honestly, we're most of the way through. For the tail, we're going to need some hot glue to hold this guy down. Um, in the channel where the, uh, the back, you'll see there's a small cutout, which is where the popsicle stick that is my elevator spar. You see that cut out after the alignment tab? That's for this guy. Plop that in. Use those up. Just keep that square to the ground for a little bit. Um... The only pieces remaining are going to be to glue the nose on. 
which I suppose we can do simultaneous work to both ends of the airplane. The wires pass through the top, come into the cowl. That is why there's a cutout at the leading edge of the cowl there. That's where your wire pass through. So same thing, this is going to go on. And we're gonna make sure it is uh, square to the fuselage at the bottom. Because the foam board is going to uh, There we are, that'll work. The foam board is going to tuck underneath that at the uh, leading edge. So put a little hot glue in these guys. See if I like that alignment. I do want it square to the front of the fuselage. I'll bring in, let you see. There you are. Yeah, that's going to be great. And yeah, there's going to be a, no gap at the bottom of this and a gap at the top. Because remember, this piece is going to tuck underneath there. Okay, I just got hot glue on my fingers. If I didn't have the prop on, and I know what they say, they say, you know, don't build and don't do stuff with your props on. Well, you know. Nobody ever accused me of being the smartest guy in the room, but, um, and I, I probably will take it off when I go and test stuff later, but, you know, it would square up a lot easier and I could, I could jig it on the ground. That'd probably be a better way to do it in hindsight, but here we are. All righty. Um, let's see how we are on that. Yeah. Okay. Let's move back to the tail. It's back here. So, this is our tail assembly, which will just tuck in on that. And then we have our uh, two top fitting plates. I'm going to pull you back a little bit. Just gonna sight down it and see how I like the alignment. Yeah, things look about right. Okay. Let's put some hot glue, see how she fits. Squares up. Only burn my fingers a little. Set that straight. You really want to do your best to get your tail straight. Aligned with a slipstream. And I think we're in good shape there. Check that our elevator is free. Let you have a peek down here. So, elevator is free, and tail presses straight. It did snug on that popsicle stick. I might make that cut tolerance a little wider. I, I may have underestimated that. Um, okay, it's, uh, let's put some, some wings on. The radio will be accessible later forward of the forward of the leading edge of the wing. You can see the cutout here where the, the wing will lay. Make sure all of your wiring is tucked down and is 
free of this area. You don't want to have one of these wires sticking out the side or anything like that. Um, you know, let's go ahead and just put on our uh, control surface going back to our elevator because, and this might be a design change. Dum, dum, dum. Let me see. When this goes into position, yeah, you'll have limited access back here to this servo. So that might be something I'll change. Let me grab a radio. That's all set. Um, grab a battery of questionable charge. Throttles at idle. Let's plug this in. We are this arm, let me get a model that makes sense, even though I do have most of these guys set up the same. And all right, they're working. I will even give it a test. Okay. That's all working. Everything should have centered. So, with servo centered, let's install our control horn. Make sure that you have the side which will go over your servo actuator set. Come back here. I'll let you watch as we do this at the back end. Square and drop a uh, set screw in there. And then we can even, let's close out the tail. Um, the way I'll do this, that'll go up to there. So I'll bring this up. Hot glue. Set that in just like that. There we are. Wipe some of that electric snot off. Got a little extra. If ever you got to take hot glue off, just roll it like a good booger. Um, it hurts, but the second you start rolling it between your fingers, it'll go away. So, okay. Um, now, let's go ahead. There is this piece here. However, let's put the wing on. And when we secure that, then we can trim that last piece to slide it for or have to make it fit. I will probably make a design change and make this piece longer so it comes up here that way you can have that servo exposed uh, until you're ready so it'll allow you to close the wing out so let's do this and I know that this comes back to the set screw a little bit of hot glue on top of the servo and that goes to the set screw set screw forward I mean you can still get to it but uh, anyway there's always a better way, you know? If you can improve it 2%, why not? So let's install that. Same thing, put a little weight on this. Put a little weight on that. Well, I'll use one of these. You know, you're working with foam board. Um, that's why I like the uh, maker's blocks with the holes in them, um, because it doesn't crush the foam board. Sometimes you, you stack a couple of the solid blocks on there and you'll put more weight than you really think you need. So, let's, well, there we are. See the overall airplane. And uh, we're really coming down to the end of it. Um, 
All we need to do is put the control horns in on the ailerons. These will set like that. For this guy here, I'll take one of my, uh, this is the forward closeout. I'll take one of my, this is the uh, sliding vent that has the tab at the back end. I just put a little pinch here and there just to start it in there. You can see the cutout and the cutout. Line that up, it slides right in. There we are. Nose is gonna tuck into the motor mount. I'm gonna give a little pinch to the front just so it knows where it's going. Same thing, there we go. That'll slide aft. That nose is now secure. I'm willing to bet that we can spin this around. Let's run a test fit. These horizontal cuts, boy, they're handy. Sure make that uh, mounting of internal servos easy. Okay, so you see, there's, there's probably a two mils clearance there that I can slide this forward and aft. It's a uh, lady's choice where you want it. Only somewhat sarcastically being that, what is it, 99.9% uh, .9 of my viewers are male? But um, somewhere there's a lady. There we go. Slide that in. Now I'm going to uh, square it up to the back end. That looks about right to me. Let's pull that guy off. Uh, I can now break my flapper rons. Let's exercise them. Other thing I'll tell you when you fly these things. Um, you know, I don't give a lot of guidance on what sort of control throws to do and stuff like that. I leave it up to you, but I'll tell you this. Um, if you have an airplane that you think the center of gravity is right and it still flies weird, chances are you have too much control throw. What might be happening is you're stalling out the control surface, um, either on the side you expect it or maybe even on the other wing. Um, and the airplane will do some really wonky stuff. So if ever you have an airplane that you just can't seem to tame, Cut your control throws down. Flip this for now. And we'll take our flight control rods. Oh, I just can't get those out. There we are. That'll work. These are tiny, man. But they work. Little sub trim will cure it. I'll do the same on the other side. You know, I'm gonna do it this way. I know it's, well, it's not bad television. Watch, we'll do this. There we are. Same thing. Plop that in, turn it. Yeah, it takes a little force, but you know. Sometimes that's life in the big city. There we are. Uh, screws, like this screwdriver, I can extend it a mile out. It uh, lessens up the angle of the dangle when you're installing these things flat like this. That's good. Do the same on the other side. This is, uh, there you go. For you uh, people that want to watch me screw them, mom would be proud. I'm screwing on the internet. There we go. CG marks. Um, we built an airplane. Let's pull you back. So that's it. It's uh, 
it's come together. It's kind of fun. Let's throw a battery in it. Turn the radio on one more time. All right. The prop isn't going to hit anything if it spins. We're good to go. Pop this in. Slide that where I want it. Wire off to the side. You know, this is the whole thing with the sub 250 stuff. Uh, you know, one of the compromises you got to accept is it is a tighter fit. Um, but the upside of it is you get, um, with this airplane, this is designed for performance. Easiest way to get better performance out of something is to uh, tighten up your aerodynamic losses. You know? So, look at that. I think that's going to scoot. I think the uh, elevator needs some definite sub trim. We'll have to fix that. Let's see, does my trim wheel work the right way? Yep. The uh, ailerons are going the right direction. And the motor. Oh, yeah. She's got some juice. Anyway, um, so that's it. We built it. This is the... Um, Oh, let's have some fun. Let's 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 put the fat girl on a scale. Um, so battery in it. I don't know how we're gonna make this work. Let's try it. Put that in grams. Make sure we're not touching anything. And looky there, we're uh, 226 grams. So, sub 250, um, you know, for an airplane ready to go. I'll be excited to get it out. Today's a build day. Uh, we'll do another video where we take it out and go flying, but uh, I think this is gonna be a fun little airplane. Again, this is an airplane needs your undivided attention. She hauls ass. Um, it is not a tiny little park flyer. It is not a slow flying airplane, but it is loads of fun and a lot of reward, you know? So anyway, something to do if you got the parts flying around. Appreciate your time.